What are regular expressions and what role do they play in modern NLP, particularly in conversational AI? We'll talk about all of that today in NLP for Developers. Regular expressions use a specialized syntax that's often shared across different computer languages to find strings of text that match a provided criteria. So we're going to quickly look at an example. I'm not going to talk about everything that goes into regular expressions because it's a big topic. So here's an example of a regular expression. The instructions that you give to describe the type of text that you want to match are called a pattern. And I'm just going to quickly break down some of the things that are in contained in this pattern. So unless they're preceded by a slash, any letter matches itself. So ASA will match the exact string ASA, all lowercase, capital X will match exactly X, capital case, PEN will match exactly PEN, lowercase, um, and then there's a space after that. Uh, if there are brackets around uh, a string of letters, it will match any one of those letters. So uh, the first little bit will match lowercase r, lowercase a, lowercase s, lowercase a, or uppercase r, lowercase a, lowercase s, lowercase a. Uh, any string that's put in parentheses will be treated as a single group. And in this case, I'm using the group here because I want things that match the uppercase x or either uppercase or lowercase o, p, e, n, space, either uppercase or lowercase s, o, u, r, s. So this regular expression will match things like raza x, raza x, raza open source, raza open source with different capitalization. Regular expressions are very powerful. It's a very compact way of expressing a lot of logic. And this means that they're also very difficult to read. And as a result, they can lead to nasty bugs. So you may have written a regular expression that you think matches a certain set of things, and it actually matches a very slightly different set of things in a way that causes you a lot of frustration. And um, I think anyone who's worked quite a bit with regular expressions has had that frustrating experience. How are they used? Uh, the big place is to match patterns in text. For example, in a find or replace. In chatbots in particular, um, they can be useful as entity extractors. Uh, and I'll show you an example on the next slide. Also, they have a long history of use with chatbots. So one of the, the earlier chatbots, which is called Eliza, which was a therapist that would take whatever you said and then reply back to you as a question, was built using a series of regular expressions. Um, so if you said, I like pineapples, I would be replaced by you using these regular expressions. And the question would be, you like pineapples? So here's an example of how you can use regular expressions with Raza. So in our NLU file, we can define a regular expression here, um, it is slash D, slash is a control character, which means that's not a D, um, instead it stands for digits. So anything between zero and nine. Uh, and then in the curly brackets, uh, it must be exactly six of the preceding thing. So here, exactly six digits. And then we have some examples of intents where people are uh, using text that matches this pattern, and that's their account number. So this is a really good place to use regular expressions because it's a very simple regular expression, pretty easy to debug. If you ever have, you know, six digits in a row, it's going to match that. Um, and also, it would be fairly difficult to provide enough training data to a, uh, a language model, for example, for it to identify only six digit numbers and all six digit numbers. So for things that are very templatic that always have the same format, regular expressions can be a great way to do entity extraction. So there are a lot of benefits to regular expressions. A big one is that they are very flexible. Um, so once you know how to write regular expressions, you can use them to do a lot of things. They've also been around for a really long time, which means there's a lot of tools and tutorials for them. I'm not going into great depth here, but if you want to learn to use regular expressions, there are a lot of resources out there. Uh, they can also help you handle out of vocabulary tokens you care about. So if you know, uh, for example, that titles are always going to follow a specific punctuation structure, but you don't have a list of all the titles that you could possibly have, um, you could use that to, you know, replace that title with maybe a token that replaces all titles, for example. And a big benefit of regular expressions and using them to uh, detect entities is that they don't require training data. There are some drawbacks to regular expressions, and a big one is that they're not very easy for humans to read. Uh, they were designed at a time when a bit of memory was a not insubstantial amount of memory. They're very compact, um, and that just makes them hard to sit down and understand and work through. 
Um, there's also some subtle syntax differences between languages and implementations that, again, can cause hard to read bugs. So if you are working on regular expressions, make sure you know which specific dialect you're using. Um, and again, very easy to introduce hard to find bugs. Um, so you could imagine, uh, for example, in our six digit number example, um, it would also match the first six digits of a 12 digit number, which maybe we might not want it to. Uh, also, if you have a language that has a lot of non-ASCII or non-Latin characters, um, or that is written right to left, it can become much more complex to write regular expressions, and you have to refer to Unicode endpoints, um, so it can be, you know, uh, rough. And a big error when it comes to using regular expressions is using them or writing them by hand when you don't have to. For example, if you have an entity that is time-based, you can write regular expressions by hand to cover all of that, or you could use a library like Duckling where that work has already been done for you and tested for you and is maintained by somebody else. So it's just a little bit more efficient to almost always not write your own regular expressions from scratch. Another common error is not writing tests specifically for your regular expressions. So I would recommend if you are interested in using regular expressions in your assistant to write a bunch of entities that you do want it to capture and write a bunch of similar entities that you don't want it to capture and use those to test your regular expressions. If you're interested in learning more about all the different things you can do with regular expressions and where the regular and regular expressions comes from, I'd recommend Chapter 2 of Speech and Language Processing by Dan Jurafsky and James Martin. And there's also, if you're looking for a quick way to test your Python regular expressions, uh, pythex.org has an online Python regular expression tester. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope that you learned a little bit about regular expressions and some of the places that you might want to use them or might want to avoid them uh, when doing NLP and particularly building conversational systems. I'll see you next time. Bye!